Hey, Tommy. Hey, Kevin, how are you? All right, so what is the project today? Well, I thought I would build an end grain cutting board. Oh, nice. So we did a cutting board recently, right? It was pretty popular. Yeah, we did an end grain cutting board. We did it out of uh, some reclaimed wood. There was a, uh, it was left over from a, another project, so sort of use what we got. Hard pine, right? Hard pine, that's right. And we also, end grain, as I said, the nice thing about end grain, uh, when you cut uh, end grain, the knife actually goes between the grain of the wood so you don't do the damage. So if it was a side grain like this and I cut on the cutting board, it would all mark up. You'd have to sand it, clean it up. Okay, so not hard pine this time though. You got uh, th a couple different species yeah. here. Yeah, I got three different species. I've got walnut, cherry, and maple. It's all hardwood. Mm -hmm. And the benefit to this hardwood, it will hold up really well, but also the three different colors will, will do a three-dimensional cutting board. So it'll oh. look like cubes. So kind of like an illusion, and you're gonna right. use the colors as sort of shadows. Right. Very cool. Yeah. All right, I'm in. What do you wanna right. do first? Well, the first thing we have to do is, these boards are a little bit different. If you look at this maple right here, I have to true this up. And I want to also make them all the same thickness. So we're going to run them through the planer so they'll all be the same height. Got it. Let's do it. Now we're ready to make our cut. All right, we've got our first angle at 30 degrees cut right here. Next thing we wanna do is cut another one on this side and it's gonna be parallel to the one we just cut. Also, all sides have to be equal in length. That's gonna make it a rhombus or a parallelogram. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a measurement of this side right here. I'm not gonna hook the tape on. I'm gonna take and use number one to start with, and I'm gonna look down at measures 11 sixteenths. Tip it over, put it on one again, and mark 11 sixteenths here. Draw a line. Put an X because this is the side of the line that I want to cut on. Set my fence and then cut that one and all sides will be equal in length. Now we're going to take the three pieces and we're going to glue them together and we're gonna put the maple and the walnut and then we'll put the cherry in the V. So let's glue these two sides first. Put some glue on there. I don't wanna put the glue on too thick because we wanna be able to pull them together. Put it together right there. Okay, so now more glue here. The other thing we have to be careful is we don't wanna to get too much glue on the outside because we're gonna end up trying to put these pieces together and any glue on the outside is gonna interfere with the tightness of the joint. All right, you ready? Drop this on. How's that look? Good, good. I'll hold it and you run some tape around it. All right, nice and tight now. All right, it's getting a little ooze out. We'll get rid of that. It's a good sign, means we got it tight. Yep. This is definitely easier with two people. Now that our glue blocks are dried, we're ready to cut the thickness of our cutting board. I'm gonna first square the edge and then cut my length. Our cutting board is gonna be about inch and three quarters on the thickness, so we've set our stop block up a little bit longer and we'll chew that all up once it's all glued together. To make sure all of the pieces fit tight, we have to sand off all these little burrs first. Okay, 
Okay, so we've wet down this plywood that we're gonna glue them on so the blocks won't stick to the plywood. What we need to do is first glue two sides and then three sides. We're gonna glue each piece, but we don't wanna put too much glue on it because believe it or not, the glue can stop the pieces from going tight together. It's kind of amazing that you can already see the illusion, a three-dimensional. I love doing this stuff, it's fun stuff. Now that our glue is dry, we've taken the blank and placed it into our sled tray. We're using a real wide planer blade on our router, and that will basically shave the surface flat. We just want to take a little bit off at a time, and then we'll flip it over and do the other side. To fill up some of the cracks in the joints, I'm going to mix up some paste using the sawdust from the router and some wood glue. I drew some lines around the perimeter of the block to make it square. And now we'll just cut it with the track saw. Finally, we'll round out the edges on the top and bottom, and then we can sand it. Tommy, this came out so nice. Smooth, yeah. nice edges. Look at that pattern, huh? Came out nice, it really did. Great. All right, so one more thing to do. We have to coat it with this cutting board oil. This is made with beeswax, coconut oil, and pure mineral oil. Nice. So we're gonna put a coat on now. We wanna wait about 12 to 24 hours for it to dry, and then we're gonna put another coat. So obviously food safe, cutting board oil. Yeah, look at that pop. There. Look at that pop. That is awesome. Yeah. Pretty nice. Well done, Pops. Nice job. Thanks for the help. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.